In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to get Jet Striker quick and easy. It's a very easy oath to get with little risk and a very high reward considering that Jet Striker is a really solid oath. But before we get into it, know that I'm going to be leaving timestamps for you guys in the description as well as it's going to show up at the YouTube bar or whatever that is, like chapters or whatever. And if you find this video to be helpful, it would mean a lot to me if you guys could consider leaving a like, subscribing, and commenting down below because all of that will help out my video and my channel overall. First things first, you're going to definitely want to have a glider. It can be a normal glider and 50 agility to get this oath. I recommend a glider so that way your life is 10 times easier. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I'm gonna get my glider. Fortunately, first things first, and that is to get two sticks, and we're gonna get some XP real quick off of these bandits, and I'll explain why here in a moment. But essentially, if you're an IL Vigil, what you wanna do is if you see these bandits spawn in, which they tend to spawn in pretty frequently, go over to them and grip them, so that way you get some experience for getting the grip on the bandits. And this will help you out just spawn in IL Vigil to where you can train your agility over and over again essentially what you can do is you can be over next to this campfire and then wait a couple minutes or whatever and then you can run back over check if they spawn if they don't run back over there and just keep doing that back and forth to see if they spawn in if they are spawned in and you need xp go ahead and grip them real fast and then keep training your agility using ankle weights if you don't have ankle weights when you spawn in you guys can get them by going into the isle of vigil temple here the temple of the blade and then going left going left again left one more time right and then you basically just head down the stairs which will take you to the trainer this is where you can practice your parrying on a semi-difficult enemy which is really just an npc and then once you learn how to parry this you should be pretty much good to go but essentially you want to go down here where this trainer will be and then you can go ahead and buy your ankle weights right here for 25 notes and also if you need some extra xp you can go ahead and talk to this guy right here and ask him if he needs help and if he says yes then go ahead and interact with him one more time and then let him see your weapon manual he won't take it away from you forever though you will get your weapon manual back in fact you don't even lose it so there's that and my favorite method of training agility is by going into an area where i can just go into circles and basically doing a slide holding space and then doing that little double jump and then roll at the last jump so it looks like this slide jump jump and then roll and I just do that over and over again. And then that's how I level up my agility, of course, while spamming ankle weights. Now, there's a few ways that you can get yourself a glider. One of the ways is by going to Sharko Cave and killing the Sharkos to get their hide, also known as the Megalodonts and the Megalodont hide. However, that's a little bit more dangerous considering that some people might want to get this early game. And if you're not used to fighting the Sharkos, then there's just no use in that. So I like to come over to this spider egg and turn this into fiber. And there's going to be some of this bamboo that you can get as well. If you get two, you can turn those into fiber as well. So for example, two bamboo bundle, craft it. Now I have three fiber exactly. Now we take that three fiber, we're going to craft it, and now we get claw. And every time that you craft things as well, you get more XP. And since I have seven notes, I'm going to go see if I can get myself a piece of cloth for notes, because you can also buy cloth at the Isle of Vigil. It's six notes, so I should be able to buy this. And you have to use one of these craft stations. There's one in the inn all the way up there at the spawn where the Isle of Vigil spawn is. There's also one down here. I'm going to use the one down here since I'm already here. We're going to go sticks. We're going to go cloth. Bam, we got ourselves a glider. Now, once you have your glider and you also have your 50 agility, we're going to go ahead and head on over to Minotirsa. All you need to know about Minotirsa is that you don't really want to fight anything. If you're a low level, if you're a higher level, it doesn't really matter. And you're going to run and follow my pathing once we get there. However, I'm going to speed up this part of the video so that way you guys can see where I go to get to Minotirsa. Once you're near your boat, you roughly want to go straight. There's going to be a rock that's kind of like right in front of the Isle of Vigil somewhere out here. And you kind of just want to go around it until you head into a gate. You will see a starting island where a lot of people go to start off the game and get their early levels over to our right here. And that's going to be known as Arisia. So we're kind of just going around this rock and then heading straight towards a gate. And if you have max graphics on, you'll be able to see the gate come up here. And it's going to look like it has some sort of circular thing on top of it. When we get there, I'll show you what I mean. Over here is Arisia, by the way. And this circular thing is what I'm talking about. I think there's also another one at the top left here, or I could be wrong. Yeah, there it is right there. Once you're through this gate, you kind of want to go slightly to the left. You're going to get a speed boost by going through that gate, by the way, if you didn't know that already. You're going to see these statues kind of go past it and start turning left a little bit. Then you should end up seeing these rock formations here, and you kind of just want to go between them. And then you're going to have to dodge some icicles here. If you're in a dinghy, this should be easy. Otherwise, if you're in another type of boat, just feel free to try and find a way to around it. 
And then instead of getting off here at this beach, we're going to go a little bit past it on the other side of this icicle thing right here, because that is where the shipyard will be for Minitirsa. All right, now that we docked here, we're going to go ahead and recall my boat real fast. There we go. And now let's go ahead and start climbing up. If you have 50 agility at this point, everything should be very easy, which you should because that's the only way to get this oath regardless. Watch out for these guys. These guys are the monks here, and they're essentially shadow cast monks. They use nothing but shadow cast mantras, and then they also summon mud skippers with also mantras to attack you. So watch out for those guys. Once you're up here, climbing up this side where that beach side was when we were coming in and we passed it, then what you want to do is you just kind of want to keep heading this way. What I like to do is because I'm used to enemies being right here. I like to climb up right here and then I keep going straight over this way. Then I climb up here, up this stone as well. If you feel like you won't be able to make it, you can use the tree, but you should be able to make most of these climbs regardless. Then you come up here and then after we pass this dude that's standing right next to this tree that gives you a hint for the trail of one, we can go ahead and climb up here up one more time up here as well to our left and then we're going to see these icicle things that we climb up which we're going to have to climb be a little bit more careful on this specific area because it is a little bit easier to fall off since it is ice then we're going to climb all the way up here we're going to climb onto this rock onto this rock and then we're going to go this way and then what we're going to look for when we get here is we're going to see if there's like this big construct looking dude he's going to look like this if you see this anywhere on Minotirsa, run for your life and don't get anywhere close. If it makes you guys feel better, run around holding this menu up because this is the fastest and the most consistent, safe way of logging out of the game. Because even when you click close on the Roblox client, it will take a little bit for your character to disappear. This guarantees that you basically log the second that you're able to click yes. So anyways, we're going to go past this uh, construct in the ice there. Go up this rock here. Keep heading this direction. Climb up this ice, climb up here. You're gonna see trees and a little bit of like a valley down here as well. You're gonna go ahead and wanna roll. Try not to take any fall damage. If you take fall damage, it's okay. Keep heading straight, climb onto this, onto this ice right here. Climb up this, this is the most sketchy part. If you struggle to climb up it, try doing a slide jump on it. And then we're gonna go ahead and climb onto this ice, climb up here. We're gonna go across over here onto this ice. Now there usually could potentially be some sort of guard here from the ministry so watch out if there's a guard here that you shadow cast if you can get past them and then you get down there and you don't want to have to worry about them targeting you while you're trying to do the quest just go ahead and log and then quick join into another server or whatever but anyways it doesn't seem like there's a guard that i have to worry about right now so we're fine and then we're going to head to this slopey area where we're going to go ahead and do a roll into the wall to save our fall damage which we still took a decent amount and then this is our quest giver right here what I like to do is I like to get myself a little bit of a head start, even though it's not really necessary with 50 agility. So I like to stand right here and then I like to interact with the person. Essentially, what's going to happen is I'm going to trigger a quest line. There's going to be some sort of yellow orb that gets highlighted over here. And all you have to do is beat this NPC to that yellow orb and stand beneath the orb while you wait for her to catch up. And what happens then is you get your oath, the jet striker. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. And now the race started, there's the yellow orb right there. And then all you really have to do is just kind of run in a straight line towards it. Try to avoid any of the combat that you can. If there is anybody that tries to fight you on the direct way there, the biggest worry that you might have is a construct being in the way, but it's okay if you get a little bit of distance by climbing. For example, the construct will spawn right here, but if you climb here fast enough, you should be good to go. And then since I made it before her I, to the orb, I kind of just wait here and then she's going to teleport right on top of me. There she is. And then I move out of the way, go ahead and take the oath. There it is. Oath Jet Striker. If you've gotten this far, congratulations on getting Jet Striker, but now let's go ahead and upgrade it. But at this point to upgrade and max out Jet Striker, we have to go and get ourselves five different orbs from five different locations. And I will show you now how to get to every single one easily. Right here, you can automatically already see one of the orbs, but you have to go across this ravine area once again. Then we're going to climb these rocks. And right on top of these icicles here is our first orb. You can also save this one for last if you want to, but I like to get this one right off the bat. Now we're gonna head back the way that we came. We're gonna head all the way down once again, but we're gonna take a little bit more of a safe area. You can use a glider to get down if you want to, but I like to just go down the way that I came up here.
All right, at this point, hopefully you got back to the shipyard and were able to spawn in your own boat again. So that way you can sail to the next area, which is Etrus. And I'll be honest with you guys right now, I absolutely hate Etrus. I get jumped there way too often, even as a freshie. I, I just, I hate that specific city so much. I can't even begin to explain it to you. But essentially, if you know where the Etrus Palace is, we're going there and it should be on the rooftop there. If you guys don't know how to get to Etrus from Minotirsa, just go ahead and follow the sped up version of me sailing to Etrus. And then you'll be able to see this gate when you pass this rock. If you just keep heading straight, there's going to be a gate right here which leads to Etrus. Also, to make sure that your boat goes as fast as it possibly can, always try to point your sails in the direction of the flag, which is essentially showing you the direction of the wind. Watch out for other players once you get to this specific spot, though. People will attack you just because Etrus is an absolute pain. You should be expecting any sort of person to decide to PvP you at any point in this game regardless, though. But I don't know, man. Etrus is like a free-for-all. All right, so once you land at Etrus, you're going to quickly try to get through this as fast as possible because no one likes Etrus from what I know. But anyways, I don't like to go up the cave system. I actually like to go on the outside. It just feels like I get through it way easier. So I like to climb up these rocks over here. Just climb all the way up here and then and we're going to be in the Etrian Wilds, I believe, where we just keep climbing, keep going forward. And then we're going to go next to this tree here and just climb up this rock. Should take us up right here. Then we cross this bridge. Make sure that you build up your momentum, so slide down slopes. Then I'm going to climb this. Keep going straight. Climb up this. Slide down this bridge. We're almost there. If you've been following along this far, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Now we go ahead and slide across this bridge. I'm going to climb up here. The palace is over there. You can see the orb from here. You want to pass this tree in the middle, cross this bridge. This is the inn. This is where another spawn is. This is the spawn in Etrus specifically. You want to go across this bridge here. Go up these stairs. But once you're here, I like to go on the right side because this seems the most consistent for me. But there is a pipe that leads up the right side of the Etrus palace. And I'm going to climb that as fast as I possibly can in case that the guards are trying to fight me or something. So we're going to get up here and then we're going to go ahead and keep climbing up some more because it's at the very tippity top of the palace. Then once you're right here, you pretty much just climb up it from right here and then you can go ahead and grab yourself the second orb. Congratulations, we're two fists done. Now at this point, you just want to head back the way that you came, go to the docks. There should be a NPC there, which is another shipyard NPC that you can go ahead and spawn in your boat once again. I'm personally going to do that myself. I'm going to go ahead and recall it, then spawn it back in. Whenever you do the Etrus part of this quest line for the Jet Striker Oath and trying to max it out, trust me, you're probably just going to want to do it as fast as you possibly can, or just have one of your friends that's very good at PvP with you at all times or something while you're going through Etrus. Anything that can add extra security for you, because Etrus, for whatever reason, man, it really is one of the most dangerous areas on the map. And now we're heading to Arisia, which is also a very dangerous place, so try to get through this place as fast as you possibly can as well. Don't worry, I know that this is stressful, but we're almost done. Because luckily for us, Arisia has two of the orbs that we need. So once you leave Etrus, you just turn to the right and then go through the gate. Once you're through the gate, you kind of just hug this sort of stream looking thing right here, which is on the left side of the gate. And then you kind of just keep going straight until you run into the second gate. And then you turn left at this second gate. Then you'll be heading straight to Arisia. If this is your first time sailing boats in this game, sailing boats in this game definitely takes a little bit to get used to. So don't beat yourself up over it. Now we're heading straight to Arisia. You can decide to leave your boat at wherever you dock it, you don't always have to recall your boat, especially if you don't have a chime of dwelling like I have from your guild, because you'll be able to spawn at your boat if you die. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave my boat here. Now, once you're at Arisia, we're going to go ahead and climb. That's pretty much all we're doing here. We're just here to keep climbing high up and avoiding conflict if possible. <laughs> so I like to go up here. Going to keep climbing up. I'm going to go ahead and climb up from here. Climb up here, and then we're gonna go to the right. The area that we're going to is Tower Struck Lands, which is essentially just a place where there's a bunch of towers and the orb will be found at the top of one of the higher towers. While you guys are here in Arisia, though, be prepared for any form of combat. It could be bandits, it could be thieves, it could be other players, anything of that sort. Just make sure, like that, that right there is a Sharko, that there is a uh, Megalodon. We're gonna try to avoid that at all costs if possible. Or you guys can just log. That also is an option here. 
I'm surprised I was able to get around that. Over here is the bandit camp. This is where a lot of players end up grinding for the earlier levels in the game. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up here. You don't have to climb up here. It's just a little bit of a shortcut. And then we're gonna go ahead and head down. And then right here, this gate is the opening area to the Tower Shuck land. So I'm gonna go ahead and climb up here. I'm gonna go ahead and head up here. I'm going to get to the sand area. Now, the only thing that you, I want you guys to worry about in this area is if you don't have survivalist, which is a boon in this game, or if you're not an Etrian, you're going to be taking some acid rain damage potentially if the game decides to trigger an acid rain weather event. So watch out for that. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but you definitely want to keep that in mind. And then after you cross that bridge, we're going to climb up here now. So yeah, just keep in mind to be on the lookout for any potential sort of acid rain. It, it can happen at literally any time. Then we're going to go ahead and climb up here. Then we're going to go on this side of the building here. Keep climbing up this. Just keep climbing until you're at the top of this tower. And then you can see the orb from right here, which is right there. We're going to go ahead and just slide across this. Going to keep sprinting over here. And then we're just going to have to climb this tower next. I'm going to use the window because I like using the window. And then if you're struggling, you can always just come to this side. And then just go ahead and finish the climb there. And then if you got that one, congratulations, that's another part of this issue done. Would you look at that, another Sharko. Yeah, we're going to watch out for those, especially at low levels. Oh, great. I have this enemy on me now. And then what you want to do is you want to come back to the entrance. There's a bridge right above it. And I kind of just went across the towers. It was one of the towers that you climbed up right next to this bridge right here. You just want to go through here. Watch out, though. That's where this one enemy spawned. It was an event. I didn't attack it, and then it just randomly disappeared. And then what you want to do is you want to head over to your left. This takes you to Upper Arisia. Again, Acid Rain is another concern over here. Now, at this point, you don't really have to worry about much of anything except for being able to make a jump. So all you want to do is once you're right here, you want to make sure you make this jump. If you're worried about the jump, feel free to just go right here, climb up this, and then dash across. And then what you want to do is you want to climb up here, climb up here if you can, and then keep climbing up. I make this jump too, although this one's not dangerous. You just want to go ahead and head over here. And then this is why you needed the glider. You want to go ahead and just glide down there. I just remember there's another thing that I need to tell you guys about, and that is if you are marked as in combat, your glider won't work. If there's acid rain and you're taking damage from acid rain, your glider also won't work. So don't be taking damage. Don't be in combat whenever you're trying to use the glider, and then you should be fine. And so now this area is called bird cage. We're essentially going into this cage, and there should be a nice orb over in the side to it. Now at this point as well, after you get this orb, you can technically reset if you have your spawn over at Isle of Vigil, but for those who don't have their spawn set, I'll go ahead and go there. Also, if you ever see these right here, you see how there's like feathers falling? Yeah, don't, don't even get close to that. That's an owl. Unless you're confident in fighting the owl, then by all means go for it, but... If you're a low level player with not much stats or anything like that, yeah, avoid that at all costs. Now at this point, we kind of just head down, try to get down safely if possible. If a Sharko spawns in on you like that, your best bet is to either try to fight it or try your best to run away or try to get it to fall off. Also, I believe Sharkos can also spawn right here potentially, so be on the lookout for that too because anything can happen. Now you just kind of want to slide down the stairs and then get back to the shores of Lower Arisia. Then you can go to this little pole here, recall, spawn in, whatever you want, stuff like that with your shipyard stuff. And then it's time to head to Isle of Vigil. This is the last orb that we got to get. And then we got to head back to Minotirsa to talk to that lady once again. Now, once you get to Isle of Vigil, there is a guy there that is sitting down right in front of the temple and is looking at like this water, this, this body of water right there. And the orb is literally right there in front of that guy for whatever reason. It's the easiest orb to get out of all of them in this game outside of the Minotirsa one, I guess. Now, Isle of Vigil, although I do consider Isle of Vigil to be one of the safer spawn areas and just one of the safer islands in general, keep in mind that you can still get jumped here. I've gotten jumped here multiple times as well. So always keep your head on a swivel for that. And also, if you're worried about not getting enough XP, you guys can also do the guy's quest right here where you just talk to him, ask if he needs help, and then he'll give you a food crate. And after that guy gives you a food crate, you can go ahead, pick that up, and then take that over to 
the guy that we're actually going to go in front of right now. It's just a guy again in the temple. You just got to deliver the food crate. The only issue with the food crate is that all you can really do at that point is just slide down slopes and climb because you can't like normally slide on flat ground like this whenever you're carrying the food crate. We're gonna try to avoid combat at all costs once again. You just kind of want to go and head up these stairs back into the temple and then right there in front of this guy that is the last orb that we need. And on top of that, this is where you would deliver the food crate to. You just talk to this guy with the food crate in your hands, and it'll go ahead and take in, give you notes, as well as a little bit of experience and Etria reputation. Now, once we're done with all that, we gotta go back to the docks to recall and spawn in our ship once again, because we gotta head back to Minotirsa. And if you guys wanna get a reminder of how to get to Minotirsa from Isle of Vigil, go back in the video. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here. And I'll see you guys once I'm at Minotirsa. Now, once you're at Minotirsa, congratulations for getting this far to begin with. And then you just kind of want to head up the same way that you went to the NPC the last time. Just keep in mind all those dangers I mentioned earlier, and you should be fine. Just get there. I'll see you guys when I'm there. And now once you're here, you just talk to the NPC once again. You go ahead and just tell them that you're done. And then they would say, you've done it. That's everything. So once you do get that, that's how you complete and max out the entirety of Jet Striker. Anyways, that's going to have to be it for this video. I hope that this was very helpful and informative to you guys. If it was, please don't forget to try and leave a like or a comment or subscribe. As long as you consider it, it would make me happy. Either way, though, I'm just glad I could be here to help you guys out learn how to get Jet Striker. Anyways, though, without further ado, I can't wait to see all of you guys in the next one. Bye -bye. Also, a little extra thing, your eyes turn like blue when you get the Jet Striker oath. It's pretty cool.